Hello everyone, Colin Canet here for Woodwork Web. Today our topic is going to be box joints. But before we talk about box joints, we also want to talk about another kind of joint, and that's a dovetail joint. And a lot of people get these confused. Now the difference between a box joint and a dovetail joint is pretty simple. A box joint is squared off. The pins and the tails are both squared off. In a dovetail joint, there's angles. The pins and the tails have angles to them, so they slide together uh, and, and sort of lock in place a little bit more. And that's the difference between a dovetail, this is a box joint, this is a dovetail joint. Now, what a lot of people now, what a lot of people don't realize is that the vast majority of people don't know the difference between a dovetail joint and a box joint. In fact, if you talk to a lot of people and show them a box joint, they will call it a dovetail joint. So, if you want to impress another woodworker, you make dovetail joints. If you want to impress the rest of the world, you can make box joints and they really don't know the difference. And what's interesting is the comparative uh, strength between a dovetail joint and a box joint once they're glued and both of these joints need to be glued, the, the strength difference between them is minimal. A, a dovetail joint and a box joint, once they're glued, they're basically identical and they're both very, very strong joints. Now, in the scheme of things, to me, a dovetail joint is a much prettier joint to make. Uh, it just looks much prettier with the, the angles. It looks like there's more detail that goes into it, and, and there is. Many dovetail joints are actually hand cut, although you can cut them by machine and there are jigs to cut them. Um, a lot of people cut them by hand. Uh, and Rob Kosman is one of the, the experts, and we'll give you a link to his website uh, and to his videos uh, later on in this video. Um, but in terms of the average woodworker making a good quality joint, the box joint is a really good joint to make. And Today I want to show you some of the box joint jigs that I've used and what I liked about them and what I didn't like about them and we'll show you an ultimate uh, box joint jig. Now one of the simplest box joint jigs is basically a, a piece of plywood, in this case it's a three quarter inch plywood and it's basically attached to your miter gauge and what makes this work is there's a little pin, a little, in this case it's a quarter inch pin. I've also got a couple of slots for three eighths inch uh, box joints, but this is set up not right now for quarter inch. And the way it works is you simply put a board in and you run it through the saw and it cuts a hole and there's one there with a hole in it. It's cut the first, it's cut the first hole. Then after the first hole is cut, you lift that off and you move that piece along and the pin, that little piece of wood there becomes a pin and it adjusts for the next cut. Now to make this work, this little pin in this case needs to be a quarter inch wide and it also needs to be exactly a quarter inch from the blade to make that spacing work. And it's easily adjustable because the only thing you can really adjust here, of course, is the distance between the pin and the blade, and that's what's critical. And you can usually just tap it lightly with a hammer on one side or another to do that. So there's a little bit of fiddling around that needs to happen with this. The other thing is when you get to the end of the cut, you need to bring the mating piece in, and it then becomes uh, aligned and goes across in the same cutting. And we'll show you a close-up of this so you can see what this looks like when it's going through the, the saw. So there's the close-up of the, the business end of this jig. Now these are the, the 3 8 slots, so 
you can ignore them for the time being. What we have right now, that's a quarter inch pin in there and you can see this is where the blade would go through. So to start off with, you would line the blank, there's a blank board, you would line that up like that, there we are right there, and you would run that through the, through the saw and what you would get on your first cut is you get this first hole here. Then on your second cut, you take that board, lift it up, slide it into that pin, and that then makes your second cut. Then you keep on moving along. This moves over like this, and if we turn this on, you could see where we would be making our third cut. And you keep moving all the way across until you do a, a final cut, and that's when you bring in your second piece, and it, the first piece will actually help align where the second piece wants to go and then you'll carry on doing the same thing with it. So this actually works fine. Uh, the problem with it, it's a little bit tedious because you can only really do one at a, one at a time um, and, and do a good job of it. Uh, but uh, for if you're doing a very few box joints, this works fine. The only thing I really don't like about this kind of a method is I always get confused when I'm making, for example, a box. If you're just making two sides to fit together, that's real easy. But when you're actually making a box, you have to go through, a, 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 I do anyway, I need to go through a number of iterations before I actually get all of the sides that will line up properly. So this is... Um, You'll have to, to use this, you need to do a bit of experimenting. Don't expect to do your first box perfectly with this kind of a method. It does take a little bit of time to figure out how it works. Now, the next jig that I want to talk about, another similar um, type of jig, and it attaches to the miter gauge on your table saw as well. Now both of these jigs, the single one that I just showed you and this one, you can actually use these on a router as well. You don't have to use them on a table saw. Um, but these both attach to the miter gauge and they operate, it operates the same way. The difference with this one, it's quite complex and I actually paid for the plans to make this jig because I'm in a situation where I needed to make a lot of box joints um, and I needed something that was going to do it quickly and accurately. Uh, and so I purchased this to see if this would do the trick for me. And the beauty of this one is that you can actually, and I'll show you a close-up of this one again, there's a couple of little bars here, little metal bars, that you can actually use to ex they uh, come apart and go together. Um, so you can actually um, use them to develop the kind of the size of box joint that you want. And of course they all move back and forth um, to and from the saw so that if you make, you can actually make quarter inch or three eighths um, box joints. What I didn't like about this, despite the fact it has all these wonderful uh, adjustments on them, is if you'll notice, and I'll show you close up here in a second, it actually sits up on this little platen here, this little uh, little sub base. So it's actually sitting up, you can see, it's actually sitting up above the table saw. So you need to raise the blade up, you need to compensate for that. Um, I found these little bars were not as accurate as I would have liked to see them. Uh, maybe it's the way I constructed it, but I did it exactly as the plan said. I just found that it left a little bit room for error. And we'll show you a close-up here because it does have some nice features. And it did work, uh, although I found it um, not much better than just the single board that I just showed you previously. So somebody went to a lot of work to design this thing and I have to give them credit for that. This center thing here is, is replaceable and I actually made a whole bunch of these because what this does is it helps prevent tear out so you can replace this after it gets worn. But you can actually see in there the two, the two metal parts and if you look at the back of this, it, it's actually quite complex. There's different slots and um, different adjustment pins back here 
uh, I actually had to write notes on it so I could remember which what did what. Um, so all in all, it worked okay, but again, it was really back to the same, a little bit of the same thing, in that once you make the first cut, uh, and you couldn't really, I couldn't really double up my my boards here because I, some of them would slip back and forth, um, getting started and moving through. It just, I, it just didn't work as well as I had hoped. It did a fine job if you're just doing one or two box joints. Uh, this works fine for you. So um, it, as an alternative, it, it works okay. Now, both of these systems worked fine uh, for a small number of box joints. And if you have the time and can take the care to, to move them through, they both work fine. Uh, and this one, um, plans are inexpensive. And it does work. I needed something that made, I needed to make a lot of box joints and I needed to make them accurately and I needed to make a lot of them and I felt that neither one of these were doing the job for me. So I actually had a brainwave. I thought, you know, there is a ready rod out there, threaded bar, that has, has different, uh, the number of turns on it, you can actually use it as a measuring tool and I thought, well, if I got uh, a 4 and 20, which is basically 20 turns to the inch, I could actually use that somehow and actually make some accurate uh, box joint cuts. So I started off with my own design and I, because I had to take it apart, I actually took a picture of it so I could see what it looked like um, because I needed to take it apart to do something else. So this is a picture of the box joint that I made. And it was, it's very rudimentary, but it did actually work. Uh, what I found was it, it wasn't as accurate as, as I was hoping it would be in terms of not the actual box joint itself, but just the way it sat in the table saw. It, it just seemed a little bit flimsy. So then I got another brainwave, and I went to the internet, and I looked up box joint jigs. And, and, and what did I find but... Lynn Sabin's box joint jig. And I found that on the Leeway uh, website. And, and again, we'll give you links to all of this because I didn't invent this stuff. I'm just passing along information. Um, and um, the, uh, the Leeway website gave, you have to do some digging for it on there, but there's some very good information and there's a bit of a change from the original um, Lynn Sabin box joint jig. So, uh, I went ahead and I thought, you know, I'm just going to use some scrap lumber here and make a box joint jig according to the plans here because I'm still a little bit skeptical and I want to see what this thing looks like. And here's what that box joint looks like. So this is the box joint plans that are on the Leeway site. This is a modified Lynn Sabin uh, box joint jig. Now as I was putting it together, I started to recognize it and I thought, well, this is the same as what Matthias Waddell uses in his videos. And now I don't know what came first, whether Matthias developed it or Lynn Sabin, uh, but whatever it is, it's a great plan. And so I just used some very rough lumber that I had around and I put it all together and I wanted to do some testing with it and see what it was like. And it actually, from the modified one that I had originally developed. This is, is, is a far better design, but there are some changes after I made it. There are some changes that I wanted to do to it to make it even more versatile. And in the next video, I'm going to show you what I went through to make it a little bit differently than what this plan is. And I'll show you why I made it differently because we're going to make something a little bit different with it. I'm also going to give you some links to Matthias' website and to his, uh, his YouTube channels because not only did he, ch did he test the, um, the strength of the box joint jig compared to the dovetail jig, but he also has uh, a methodology for putting gears and, and his wood gears uh, website talks about how you can actually make the gears and shows you plans. He even shows you how to make this. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to make this because you can get that 
at uh, either plans from Matthias um, or on his website. What I am going to do is I'm going to go through the process of me making my own and you can get the, the plans for this off of the Leeway website and make your own. This is a, a really good jig uh, but what I am going to show you is the differences that I made on mine so that you might want to adopt some different, uh, some different plans on yours. But today, I, what I want to do today is I want to show you why this jig is so good and we're going to do some quick uh, joints on here and I'll show you why this jig works so well. Now the jig itself uh, of course rides back and forth on the table saw and it has some, uh, in this case I put some plastic runners underneath it to keep it from moving back and forth so that it moves nice and smoothly. Now in this case I you, I'll show you how to make a handle or you can make your own handles. Uh, I actually found this old handle, it's on some old parts that I had, I'm not even sure what it's off of. But the beauty of this methodology with this um, 4 and 20 um, uh, ready rod is that for, and if you can, you can watch, this is the platen here that holds the, the wood that's being cut to make the box joints. But for example, when you do every time you do four turns, it actually moves this whole platen by a quarter of an inch. Um, so you need to do eight turns, and eight turns actually gives you a slot and then a hole, and then you do the next one. So it, it, it's a little bit tedious, but because you're using all of this is all fastened together, it's very rigid and it makes a very accurate box joint cut. The other thing that's nice with this is you can see this area here, let's flip this up here, this area here moves back and forth. So this is where your wood fits in here and because we've got some a little bit stuck there but this moves back and forth and I've actually put wing nuts on here so that I can actually tighten this board against the wood and again what's really nice about this is you can put all of your wood in here you can cut all four sides all at the same time well okay you've actually got um, eight sides in a box joint jig but you can cut all of your your wood in two cuts. You cut one, put the jig on your, on your saw, put your wood in, cut all of your wood, then you take it out, turn it upside down, and you can cut the next ones all in basically uh, two passes of using this. You don't have to use like the other jigs where you put them all in sequence, moving them along sort of one at a time. This one, you cut all four sides of your wood at the same time. So just for fun today, I thought we'd actually cut four pieces uh, and we'll put them together and we'll show you exactly how setting this up works uh, and what a great job it does of making box joints. Now the first thing you need to do is set the height of the blade and I actually have some scrap wood that I just cut off from the boards that I'm going to cut and I'm using the thickness of one of those to set the height of the blade and you always want whenever you're making a box joint jig you want the box joint to be just slightly above and it's I know it's a little hard to see but that blade is just slightly it's maybe uh, not even a sixteenth, probably about a thirty-second above the height of this piece of wood. So that's the first thing that you want to do is set the height of your blade. Now from a different angle, now that we've got the blade, the blade is down here, and I'm going to put all four boards in at the same time. And two of them I'm going to butt right against this the other two, I've actually made this little stopper here, and I'm only going to put them on, they're only going to go uh, within a quarter inch, because we're, today we're cutting quarter inch box joints, so I'm, I'm using this as a spacer, and now what I want to do is tighten up 
this bar on both sides. There we go. And that's got that wood firmly in there. It's seated on the bottom and it's offset by a quarter inch on one side. And now we're all ready to go ahead and cut our first sides of our box joints. Now, what I want to do is loosen off these boards and take them out, but I don't want to change that offset. I want that offset to remain the same. So I'm taking and turning them upside down exactly as they were and putting them back in, in, back in the jig. And I'm checking the offset to make sure that it's the same. In fact, what I found on these small ones if I actually use this as a pin to hold those top ones together, it actually makes a nicer joint. So that automatically makes sure that I have that offset. And you can, you can see how that offset is. So I'm going to put that back in there like that. Tighten that up. And we're ready to cut the next set. There, and that's got our box joint cuts all made. We'll take that pin off and watch this. There's the two opposite sides. The two opposite sides. Nice tight fit. There. So you can see that's how easy it is to make a box joint. And once you glue that up, this is extremely strong. Um, you can actually stand on it. In fact, the wood will break before the glue will break. So if you're wanting really good, tough joints, this is a great way of making boxes. So if you want to make boxes and you want to make box joint cuts, um, that uh, Lynn Sabin jig uh, just works great. It, I'm, I, I have to say that I'm very, very happy with it. I'm going to give you links to Rob Kosman's site. Um, Rob, there's a free plug for you. Uh, I have worked with Rob, with Rob at um, some of the, the shows, or worked in association with him at any rate at some of the shows. Uh, he's a great guy for making dovetail joints. If you're making dovetail joints, check out Rob's site, check out his videos. Uh, probably one of the top guys in the world for making dovetail joints. Uh, pretty and very quick. So check that out. Also I'm going to give you some links to uh, Matthias's website and to his uh, YouTube sites so you can check out 
what he's done using the gears, the wood gears that you can actually add on to making your box joint jake. So, I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web, and in the next video I'll show you what I did in making my box joint jig.